Have you ever been inside a brick manufacturing facility? How about inside a fully automated brick manufacturing facility? Let's take it one step further. How about a fully automated brick manufacturing facility that is building environmentally friendly brick along with prefabricated brick walls which a human never touches? Stay tuned. All right, everybody, this is where it all begins. This is where the red block system starts. So here you have the loam, right? It's like a topsoil type material that they put in here. Down here, they end up putting in material that used to be the bottom of the sea thousands and thousands, if not millions of years ago. And they have a pile of that, all natural resources. And then they also have the paper sludge. That's right, they put the paper into all this. So when it goes into the kiln, it burns out and it leaves pockets of air in the capillaries, which is awesome for insulation. This then dumps down, it gets all mixed together, and goes on a conveyor belt. That's right, this whole thing. You can see the different colors. Those are the different materials I just talked about. That is cool. We just talked about where all the raw material comes in and gets mixed. Well, here on the conveyor belt, you can see all the ingredients perfectly stacked together on this conveyor belt going to where they make the red blocks. So what is this called again? Head mill. Pan, pan mill. mill. Pan so mill. this is the pan mill, and it's taking all the raw material and running solid. How many ton? Uh, we are doing about 60 tons an hour here. About 60 ton of material an hour and turning it into what we're seeing going out Correct. there. I am standing in the raw material processing area. That's right, the raw material. This is what we're making the red block out of. This is what we're making the new panelized system out of. So how this works, everything comes in from up here, the raw material on the other side. It has a conveyor belt system in an H format that brings the raw material, drops it in here, gets mixed up, and then this machine right here takes it up and out and to the plant so it can be manufactured. It all starts right here and it's all natural material. Gotta love it. Talk to me, Marcus, about what we're seeing right here. What we're seeing right here is what we call the extrusion process. The extrusion process is where we bring our raw material in shape. So we have a double shaft mixer, we add some steam to it in order to get some energy, which we need for the drying process, also already into the product. And then we have uh, an auger extruder that presses it through a Form. We have 60 different formats, so we have 60 different forms. And whatever format is on, that kind of brick gets out. So we are pressing an endless stream, or extruding an end, yeah. endless stream of material, which gets cut to the tenth of a millimeter to get the single brick out of this endless stream. This is what you see back uh, down here. So yeah. those blocks then are set on dryer pellets, which this robot is doing. And those dryer pellets are put in dryer cars. And then the dryer car is going through a tunnel dryer, which has a length of about 90 meters, four rails. And there we, as I told you, gradually increase the temperature, decrease the humidity yep. uh, in order to get the brick dry. During that process, uh, the, the shrinkage occurs, 5%, uh, where the material gets smaller and smaller. So therefore we have to be very cautious with this process because if you do it too fast, you get cracks. If right. you do it too slow, you get out with wet bricks and you ruin them in the kiln. Yeah. So this is what I love about this one right here. I call it the spaghetti, right? Yeah. Think about it as a spaghetti maker where the, where the raw dough goes in and then it gets pressed out. That's what's happening on this machine. And once it's pressed out, the, uh, the, the robot arm is picking it up, stacking it on those pallets, which then put it in into the dryer you were just talking about. Correct. That's where you start seeing the moisture come out of it. It shrinks about 5%, Correct. and then it keeps working through the system into the kiln, and we'll talk about that as well. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Get now. Get now. <laughs> exactly. I think what's really interesting about this, and we don't see in the lumber industry, is one, 
You're putting your name, initials, and taking responsibility Correct. for every single block that leaves this manufacturing facility. You're dating it with the year and what block every day. Correct. So this is this is the 193rd day of the year. And not only are you taking responsibility, you're one of the one of the team members here is also having to put their initials on Correct. here. Exactly that. So everybody is held accountable. Correct. So you if something follow, happens, they can you research can follow it. Follow the product back to the source. Yeah. Which is here. Right, for life cycle. Let's say there's a big natural disaster right. and something something failed. Whatever. You can look and see what happened on that day, Correct. what you were doing, how you were producing, what the Correct. material mixes were, Correct. and make adjustments. So you what? can always learn. Dimensions, the weight, everything. Right. Because everything is documented, everything goes into a quality control system, yeah. everything is open if necessary to the public. If right. somebody wants to know something about this particular brick, we have it. Yeah. And also, with the pressure you control, the flow of the material, because what we need to do is we have to control the flow that the brick is coming out like this. So it gets tension to the inside. If you produce it, that it comes out like that. That would mean that you are producing like this and then you get cracks that open yeah. like that. So this is a, that's very specific. It needs a lot of experience and knowledge because you have to control it from every batch and then they are even doing cutoffs and check how it's coming out if it's still okay and if the mouth can have to change something on the on the mold of the die what about the uh, the heat we're feeling what's causing the heat the steam that we the two the steam that you're two, infusing yes, it has two sources one is the steam and of course you are processing it and pressing it through and form that, and, you know, friction. that friction also produces heat. So yeah. let's say without steam, we would have 30, 35 degrees. Yeah. With steam, we come up to 50, 55 degrees. Yeah. Let's say the main reason why we are adding the steam is that steam has, you know, we, we say water has a head, which yeah. means water can pass through something uh, or cannot pass. Water has a big head, steam has a very small head. So that means we get more plasticity with less humidity. Yeah. And that helps us in the drying process. And that helps us reduce energy costs because every percentage of water we have in, we have to evaporate, right. needs electric energy and needs heat energy. To put, it in, to put it in layman's terms, think of the ironing your shirt with an iron, Yeah. right? If you dump water on it, it just makes it really wet. If you put steam on it, it loosens the fibers Correct. and makes it more pliable, and it's the same concept. That's a very good, a very good comparison. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're now in the control room for the dryer and the kiln. And as you'll see as we walked by, the blocks were getting ready to go through the dryer, and then they'll go into the kiln to where they'll turn into the red block that we've been seeing throughout this whole tour. So stay tuned. Yeah. So this is, as I told you, the kiln starts back there. Yep. Where we went in. Right. Ends on the very end of the building. Yeah. The dryer over there starts here, goes the whole way to the building, and the material it's going to this way and back to the yeah. setting machine where we set the blocks of the kiln. So here we are in the preheating zone, as we call it, right underneath you. When I have ladies here, I always go with them up front there and say, you know what, between you and hell is exactly 50 centimeters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Go. Here we have approximately 730 degrees Celsius. 730 degrees Celsius. It's so precise. Yeah, you have to be, because that gives you the shrinkage, yeah. the compressive strength, the exactness of the material. This is what you control here. Yeah. And if this process is not controlled properly, you get bad material. Quality goes yeah. down. What are the lights when they come on? That just tells you which of the groups is firing now. Ah. Because here we have rapid uh, 
high velocity burners, they have their own ignition. And because here the temperature is not hot enough that the gas air uh, mixture we are putting into the kiln is, is, uh, is firing up by itself. So here have to ignite. So those are burners that have ignition and also check the, the flame. The system here. The system here is here we just blow in the right ratio of air and gas, period. No ignition because it, 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 it ignites itself as soon as you blow it into the kiln. Because the oxygen is right, because, because the, the temperature, temperature is high enough. enough. So you need to be above 700, yeah. then this mixture ignites itself. Here you see into the kiln. We are at the at the position what we call setting machine. Setting, setting machine. machine because we are setting the dried blocks on the kiln carts. So we are unloading from the dryer pallets, which we were loading over there. Okay. Unloading them here. Those bricks are already dry. And then we make groups out of it, uh, push them together, make a little gap in between so the, the fire can go around the brick, which is very important and uh, set it on the kiln cars on which the bricks are going through the tunnel kiln as okay. I explained to you before. They've come out of the heater and this is the process to where they're stacking the bricks over to here to be put on the Correct. kiln pallet kiln and that way then it goes into the kiln Correct. and the, the second step of the drying process happens. This is the second the curing. step after yeah. the drying. Yeah. Right, right, Correct. okay. Perfect. That's cool. So from the raw material all the way to the job site, the bricks never get touched by a human. That's cool. And you know what? It's very complicated, the timing of everything. Trying to get everything synchronized takes a lot of effort. Yeah, the, it important, has to. the important thing, or my most important thing always was, I want a continuous, slow flow. That's right. Because the usage raises in square of the speed. Yeah. This is an old formula, very well known. Yeah. So if you drive things very, very fast, you have a very high wear and tear. If you do it exactly the speed that you need for, but this is important to all the plants. Yeah. It doesn't help you if you are slow in the extrusion, but fast here. Yeah, it has yeah. to be combined and synchronized. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. We just walked you through a fully automated red block manufacturing facility, not just the blocks, but the full completed walls. Everything is going towards a systemized approach. Marcus was smart enough a long, long time ago to figure out how do we do more with less. The labor force is shrinking and this system is amazing. It has more properties in it than any one single material that I can think of in the traditional built environment. Marcus, thank you so much for giving us this tour. Very welcome. Yeah. Very welcome and I'm happy that you went over here and took the long way to come over here to Europe to visit us and to see what we are doing here. And uh, yeah, I really, I really hope that this technology also jumps over the Atlantic yeah. to the United States of America and uh, that would be a dream coming true for me. Sure. When you understand all the attributes that this system gives, it's not just block like we're used to seeing. There's a lot of value in these. I think it has real potential. I, I think it, it has a lot of value and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see it coming to America. Marcus, thank you so, thank much. you so much. Thank you so much. I'm Dave Cooper coming from Wells, Austria on our European tour. Bye.